But yeah, how y'all doing? Welcome back to Major Slack Videos here for stop for titillating tactical gaming. Let's take the way back machine and go way back to a video game classic known as Command and Conquer, also known as CNC. This game is the first in the series that I'm doing here, Command and Conquer 1. Many gamers now refer to it as Command and Conquer Tiberian Dawn. Not exactly sure where that name came from, but that's what it's commonly called now, Command and Conquer Tiberian Dawn. A sequel came out after it called uh, Command and Conquer Red Alert, and then another uh, third one came out after that called Tiberian Sun, and then um, at that point Command and Conquer was taken over uh, by Electronic Arts, and many gamers, including myself, felt that the series declined since then declined dramatically okay so it's basically the first three games um tiberian dawn red alert and tiberian sun which represent the video gaming classic era of command and conquer uh basically it's a real-time strategy uh game developed by westwood studios originally developed by westwood studios first released 18 billion years ago back in the neolithic era of gaming <laughs> Uh, no, it was released as a DOS game for the PC. What's a DOS game, Slack? You don't know what DOS is? <laughs> Look it up on uh, Wikipedia there, Junior. That's, uh, I guess that's before your time. Yeah, disk operating system for the per personal computer. Yeah, uh, look it up. Um, yeah, it was released as a DOS game for the PC back in 1995. Then it was released for PlayStation 1. I have an original copy of... Uh, the original PlayStation 1 version of Command and Conquer because uh, I was uh, I was right there back in the day and it re was released that was 1996 release it was released for PlayStation 1 and I think it was released for Sega Saturn a year later in 97 and um, basically Command and Conquer took the video gaming world by storm um, it was hugely popular back in the day I remember when I first saw this being played at my local video game store the decision to buy it took about point zero 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 one seconds okay I took one look at this I saw a guy he was uh, operating a flame tank and I said what's that and he said command and conquer I said I'll buy it I, it, it was like it was so impressive okay back then uh, what's it about basically it's a real-time strategy game okay very simply you build a base you build an army and then you use that army to wipe out the enemy and the game has a top-down view and your soldiers and vehicles appear as sprites on a map okay and um, you have various missions usually the mission is just basically wipe out the enemy but sometimes there's special parameters like capture a certain item or destroy a convoy or stuff like that anyways you'll see as the walkthrough progresses um, there's single player and multiplayer mode single player is far more interesting in my opinion I have played tons of multiplayer, okay? Um, but the problem is, multiplayer tends to invariably descend to the lowest common denominator, where it's just simply a matter of being the quickest to build a small group of tanks and then rush them at the enemy, hence the term tank rush. And um, when you play multiplayer, pretty much everyone tank rushes. And it's Pretty much all multiplayer games are over in about 10 minutes, 10 minutes flat. And I'll talk a lot more about that later in the, the little Command & Conquer multiplayer club I had here in Montreal, but Montreal Quebec back in the day, about 10 or 12 members and we used to play multiplayer all the time, head to head. I'll talk more about that later in another video when I've got time. Uh, for now, the single player campaign, in my opinion, uh, like I said, is far more interesting. Um, and that's what I'm going to do here, a walkthrough of the single player campaign. And yeah, by the way, the original Command and & Conquer and its sequel Red Alert are now both available as freeware, okay? You don't have to buy this game, you can get it for free. They were both released as freeware about five years ago, I guess. Um, if you want to download and install this game on your PC for free, click on the link in the video description and I'll give you much more details about that at the end of the video. This is not a huge hassle to install. You don't have to jump through hoops, you don't have to mount the CD, you don't have to run DOS box, you don't have to do any of this crap, okay? The link I'm giving you in the video description is a perfectly made-for-dummies, made hassle-free installation and that's one of the main reasons why I'm doing a walkthrough of this game because it's now so accessible to many 
uh, PC players now, okay? And I'll give you uh, more details about uh, downloading and installing um, the game for that link at the end of this video. For now, let's watch one of the best video game intros in the history of gaming. Here it is, Command & Conquer 1 Tiberian Dawn. The Grain Trade Center in Vienna was the 17th urban bombing in four weeks blamed on Nod terrorists. The Security Commission remains in close session tonight following Nod terrorist actions in Slovenia. At least your mother tipped well. Harsh, unforgiving wilderness. New Tiberium harvesting methods instituted by the Brotherhood of Nod increase profitability by 49%. Nod Tiberium holdings now account for almost half of the world's known supply, giving the quasi-terrorist group incredible leverage in the London Gold Exchange. On the domestic side... <laughs> ...cover of Tiberium ignored reporters at Hong Kong's Second World Tiberium Economic Impact Summit. Mobius is expected to refute charges from the scientific community that Tiberium might be dangerous. As the GDI forces take off in another non assault, the free world holds its breath. This is Greg Burdett. WWN, somewhere in the Mediterranean. Are you picking this up? Deactivate your defense matrix. Alright, let's jump right into the game. In the first mission, you get a choice of playing either as the Global Defense Initiative, or GDI, or the Brotherhood of Nod. And that's what I'm going to play as first, Brother of Nod. Selected. And you always get a little briefing at the beginning of each mission from this guy. So, you're the new addition to the Brotherhood. Well, I'm Seth. Just Seth. From God to Cain to Seth. I am his right hand. And I have a task for you. This is Nakumba, and he is causing the Brotherhood much grief. His views do not coincide with ours, and that makes him dangerous. Silence him. Okay, so there you go. And here's the view of the game. And we're just going to speed run <laughs> through this mission and eliminate the Kumba as quickly as possible for demonstrational purposes. All right, and I'm going to show you why uh, afterwards. Okay, so basically you go up into the top left corner of the map. You find uh, this little guy dressed in white. There, kill him. He's in the Kumba. Mission and mission accomplished. <laughs> I guess that took about what, half a minute. <laughs> okay, now here's the the part I want to call your attention to: the score screen. Okay, you have leadership and efficiency. Okay, and you can see my efficient or leadership rather is 89%. And there's a lot of confusion about what this means. All right, and I'm still not exactly positive what it means, but I know leadership has a lot to do with uh, casualties and how long it takes to do the mission. Yes, that is a factor. Time is a factor. I hear a lot of people saying, nope, time is not a factor. Not true, okay? I'm going to demonstrate that uh, once and for all um, by doing a no casualty run. Here you can see I, I had three casualties, okay? Next I'm going to do a no casualty run through the first mission. I'll show you that time is a factor, right? Efficiency is all about um, money, okay? How much money you start with and how much money you finish with. And uh, basically, if you have a lot more money, at the end of the mission, then you'll get a higher score um, in your efficiency. All right, and together your leadership and efficiency give you a final score. And I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Back so soon. Hmm. Let's see how you do with something important. For too many years, GDI forces have maintained a stranglehold on Egypt. 
It's fallen upon us to liberate these citizens, crying out for a better way of life. Kane wants to establish a base here to eliminate the smothering presence of GDI. It's too risky to move our heavy forces in, so we want you to sneak in with a few expendable troops and set up a forward attack post. Uh, by the way, there's more than enough Tiberium for you to harvest. That should easily pay your expenses. If you are detected, you fail. If you fail, you die. Okay, that's the briefing for the for Mission 2, Nod Mission 2. And we'll get to that next video. For now, we're going to jump back to Mission 1. I'm going to do a no casualty run through Mission 1 and show you the difference between leadership and efficiency scores at the end, okay? So this is the beginning of Mission 2. Fade out and start Mission 1 over again. And now I'm going to do a no casualty run, all right? Reinforcements have arrived. Now, why does it matter? Why do the scores matter? What happens is uh, the higher score you get, okay, the more money you start the following missions with. Okay, so it does make a difference, all right? If you, if you can get a real high score, you start the following missions, production missions, with uh, more money, okay? So in later missions, when it gets a lot tougher, it actually makes a huge difference, okay? Um, yeah, let's talk about that too. There are basically two kinds of missions in this game, production missions and non-production missions, all right? Production missions are when you actually get to build a base and build your, your army, and non-production missions are when you start out with a set number of troops, like this here, okay? We started out with a set number of troops, and you have to complete the mission with just those troops and those units, all right? Um, yeah. And I'll show you all about how to play Command and Conquer also in the next video in Mission 2 because it makes a lot more sense because Mission 2 is a production mission and uh, we'll have basically everything at our disposal. Well, a lot more at our disposal. We'll be able to build a base and uh, train infantry and build buildings, etc. etc. So basically here I've just created two teams. One team of infantry and one team of vehicles. See, there's the vehicles. And I'm sending the vehicles out to recon, okay? Just trying to sucker the enemy into chase, giving chase, okay? And whenever I see the enemy, go back and hide behind the infantry. And the enemy is always intent on just on killing the first thing that it encounters. So it encounter the vehicles, right? So it's going after the vehicles, and as it goes by my platoon of infantry, the infantry wipe them out, okay? So this is how basically I'm going to do a no casualty run through uh, the first mission, okay? Now, I have no casualties so far, okay? The Kumba once again is in the top left corner of the map, so you basically have to kind of like do a U... a U... turn around the map, down, across to the west, and up to the north, okay? So I found some more enemies. Draw them back to my infantry. They don't even bother trying to shoot my infantry because once again they're intent on trying to shoot my vehicles, okay? So a little bit of strategy here. Just a few more enemy units left. With the enemy vehicle comes on the scene, that's pretty much it. They're all dead. Now remember my leadership, okay? In the previous run, where it took me like, I don't know, 30 seconds to complete the mission, my leadership was 89%, all right? But I had three casualties, all right? Three casualties. This run here, I'm gonna have zero casualties, you would stand to reason that I get a better score, right? If leadership was based entirely on casualties. I contend that it is not. I contend that for Nod anyways, it's also based on time. The faster you do the mission, the better score, the better leadership score you get. Okay, uh, if you want to post a comment about that, because there's still a lot of confusion on the net about exactly what leadership and efficiency means. Mostly leadership, okay? Efficiency, pretty much everyone's got down, right? Now, I'm creating a, a kind of an infirmary here, okay? 
any units that are in the yellow, I want to put over here because I don't want to risk them, okay? So I got a vehicle in the yellow. See, they got green health bars and when they get part, partly damaged, they go in the yellow. And they get when they get severely damaged, they go in the red, okay? So these are my, you know, that's my infirmary, if you will. That's my field hospital. And all the enemy units are dead now. There's just a village. Some of the civilians in the village will take pot, shot, pot shots at you, but they're not really a threat at all. You can just go straight up to your objective. You can kill the villagers if you want. Actually, there's a mission later on where you have to kill the villagers. And now we find Nakumba. Kill him. Mission accomplished. Took me a lot longer to do this mission, but I have zero casualties. But look at my leadership score. What's up with that? It's only 46%. So as you can see, leadership is not just how many units you lose, all right? I believe it's also about time, okay? So I've got a lower score there and I actually got, yeah, I know, I got 198 one time. <laughs> I actually went through, I did a zero casualty and I managed to finish the first mission in less than three minutes. Just like a speed run. You can see there, 198, I got that. But I didn't record that, unfortunately. So, what do you think about leadership and efficiency? What's your take on leadership and efficiency? Mostly leadership, I want to hear about. Post a comment, okay? And um, let's rap about it. All right, now, how to install Command & Conquer uh, Tiberian Dawn. Uh, let's do that right now. You can run Command & Conquer Tiberian Dawn on a Windows 7 machine, no problem. It'll run smooth as butter. That's what I'm running it on now. I've got a Windows 7 machine. Before, this used to be a huge hassle. You had to mount the CD, uh, run DOS box, run slow-mo, all kinds of crap. You had to jump through hoops, but now you don't have to do that anymore. Thanks to this guy called Nyergud who created a patch, and he created a special installer, so it's just like a one-click it's just like installing any game. It's like it's so easy, okay? And the way I found this was I was just kind of like uh, dicking around on the net there one day and I, I punched in Command and Conquer because I was curious and I wanted to find an easy way to, to install Command and Conquer on a Windows 7 machine. And I put Win Command and Conquer Win 7 in Google and I did a search and I found this link right here, okay? At ggx.net, okay? Click there got to the site, scroll down a couple pages, and right here, okay, complete no CD game installation pack, version 1.06c, revision, da, 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 da. Click on that and download it and run that file and it will install Command & Conquer on a Windows 7 machine, no problem at all, okay? It's easy peasy, nice and easy, okay? And that this will install the game with no, um, cutscene videos in between like you know that uh, kind of like briefing where Seth comes on and talks to you you won't get that with this installation if you want those movies download this as well unzip that into your uh, game installation folder and then you'll have the movies as well okay the whole point of this of separating them is this is a lot bigger file okay this is a lot faster download if you want to download the movies um, it'll take you like you know a little longer to have the movies as well, but you can run the game without the movies, all right? So that's it, that's how to install Command & Conquer easy peasy on a Windows 7 machine, and I'll put that link in the video description for your convenience, all right? And that is it, uh, I wanna thank you all very much for watching, and if you thought this video was remotely entertaining, hey, don't forget to give the old Slackster a thumbs up. Coming up next, Mission 2, Nod Mission 2, and how to play Command & Conquer, all right? That's it, Slack is out.